You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming out and listening to The Real Short Box. My name is Donald here, and I've got a very special guest. I actually am here with Darren's wife, Katie. How are you, Katie? I'm great. How are you, Donald? I'm doing super well, thank you. And you are, um, what I'm told, an aficionado when it comes to classic films. That's true. I, I love old movies, and I own a lot of them, and I like to read about them. And it's just really um, inspiring to see how movies were made back then. Well, that's good, because what we're going to be talking about tonight is classic holiday films. So we're going to dive right in and get this started. So um, I know that you had prepared a list uh, I think the first one was that we're going to be discussing is The Bishop's Wife. Is that correct? Yes, The Bishop's Wife. Okay, that came out in... 1947. 1947, all right. And that starred um, Cary Grant, Loretta Young, and uh, David Niven. That's correct. Okay. And for those that don't know, a brief synopsis of this is that um, dejected by his efforts to raise money uh, to build a new cathedral, Bishop Henry Brogham which is played by David Niven, uh, beseeches heaven for guidance. He's visited immediately by a, a character named Dudley, played by Cary Grant, who claims to be an angel. Uh, Henry is skeptical, then annoyed when Dudley, he kind of ingratiates himself into the household as his assistant and wins the intentions of Henry's long-suffering and kindly wife, Loretta Young. Uh, when Dudley continues to intervene in Henry's struggles, the bishop decides to challenge heaven and his thoughts with God, I guess you could say. So what did you think? What uh, what made you pick this movie? Well, this is definitely one of those feel-good movies. It really just restores your faith in humanity, and it's just like a beautiful, um, wonderful film. And what's interesting about this film is that originally um, Cary Grant played the bishop and David Niven played the angel. In the actual movie, it's reversed. Um, so when there was an original director, William A. Sider, he left the film and then Henry Coster replaced him. And then when Henry Coster viewed what had been shot so far, he realized that David Niven and Cary Grant were in the wrong roles. So he wanted to switch them, but it actually took some convincing because, um, Cary Grant wanted the role of the bishop so much, but then he eventually accepted the change to switch his part to the angel and then it ended up being one of the most widely praised roles of his career. Uh, that's the that's the true talent of a good director is being able to see uh, which actor works best in what role, and being even in the midst of actually having filmed some stuff, switching that out and saying no 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 this isn't right. So kudos to him for doing that. Absolutely. And I'm I'm sure uh, Cary Grant was like very appreciative of that after he found out that everybody loved him in that role. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great movie. I mean, I would have been nervous at first, but yeah, I mean, yeah. If, if it makes sense, it makes sense. And if you've seen The Preacher's Wife, it's a remake of The Bishop's Wife. Uh, so, the Preacher's Wife that came out, what, in the 90s, I believe? Yeah, uh, it was the uh, 90s. It has Whitney Houston and... And um, Denzel Washington. Yes. Yeah? Okay, yeah. Um, so this one is a cute little film. Uh, it's definitely got that Cary Grant charm, which we all know and but love. he's not. Um, everybody loves Cary Grant, and everybody yes. loves holiday films. I don't know about David Niven so much. He's been in a lot of stuff uh, off the top of my head around the world in 80 days. I believe Candle Shoe. Big ones. Yeah, and Candle Shoe, which we watched together, actually. It's a good it movie. Was a, wasn't it a Disney film? Yes, it's a Disney film with Jody, a young Jodie Foster. Yeah, it's like a, there's like pirate treasure or something involved in yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a great movie. Yeah, I remember really enjoying that. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about uh, It Happened on Fifth Avenue. Now, in Happened on Fifth Avenue, stars uh, Victor Moore, Charlie Ruggles, Don DeFore, and Gail Storm. Came out in what year? 1947. 1947. And a uh, quick synopsis of that is, uh, while rich businessman Mike O'Connor, which is played by Charles Ruggles, resides in Virginia, his luxury townhouse in New York City appears vacant. However, in reality, there's a drifter, Aliosius. Aliosius? Delicious. Yes. I can never pronounce it. Uh, Mac McKeever, played by Victor Moore, has been staying there. Mac invites Jim, who's played by Don DeFore, 
an unemployed veteran who has been uh, evicted from a building owned by O'Connor, to stay at the house without revealing he's squatting. When O'Connor's daughter then, Trudy, played by Gail Storm, shows up as well, she falls for Jim and tries to help him. So this is kind of a comedy of errors and, and uh, fish out of water, and it's a combination of a lot of good things. This movie's hilarious. I'm literally in stitches every time I watch it. Like, every second is so funny. But yes, there, um, Mac McKeever is a homeless man, and there, the millionaire has a summer home and a winter home. So every time the millionaire switch houses, um, Mac McKeever switches houses too. So he just goes back and forth between the millionaire's houses when he's not there, uh -huh. but the millionaire doesn't know that. So when the millionaire's daughter, Gail Storm, comes in to borrow one of her own coats, he thinks that she's robbing the place. And because she falls in love with the other gentleman that's there, she gets her parents in on it. And then the parents come in and stay too. And nobody knows that they're the owners of the house. So it's just like really funny. And it's hysterical. And it's interesting because um, there's a song that's used several times in this movie called Mary is a Grand Old Name. And it's an homage to Victor Moore, who played uh, Mac McKeever. Um, because he starred in George M. Cohen's uh, show Just 45 Minutes from Broadway. Mm -hmm. And that's the Mary is a Grand Old Name song debuted in that Broadway show. So the fact that that song is repeated so much in that movie plays homage to Victor Moore's Broadway uh, oh, show that he was in. That's really nice. That, that doesn't happen very often where somebody plays homage to somebody, their actual person <laughs> in a movie. Right. <laughs> that's very, very funny. Very cool. Uh, I remember, I think we watched this together, if I recall. I think we did. You introduced me to this movie because I'd never seen it before, and I remember really enjoying it. Uh, it's definitely a, a, a fun, like, switcheroo and comedy of errors and stuff, and, and one that I really enjoyed. And I think anybody listening would enjoy that as well. I don't know of all the streaming platforms that it's available on, but I know you can purchase to watch it on YouTube for $2.99. Oh. So there's nothing wrong with a, with a little YouTube action. Uh, the Bishop's Wife, by the way, I forgot to mention, is available for free on Tubi TV if you're going to be streaming. Uh, it does have commercials, but I think it's worth it. It's kind of be like one of those holiday uh, traditions when you were younger and you used to watch stuff on TV and you'd have to wait for the commercials to play through. At yeah. least, uh, you know, for me, because I'm old. Um, and speaking of old, we're going to go back again to 1947. Uh, we're going to be talking about a little movie called Miracle on 34th Street. Now, that starred Natalie Wood, Edmund Gwen, Maureen O'Hara, and John Payne. Uh, the basic premise of this movie is uh, an old man going by the name of Chris Kringle, played by Edmund, fills in for an intoxicated Santa in Macy's annual Thanksgiving Day Parade. Kringle proves to be such a hit that he is soon appearing regularly at the chain's main store in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, he then surprises customers and employees by claiming that he really is Santa Claus. Of course, this leads to a court case, you know, as it always does, leads to a court case to determine his mental health and, more importantly, his authenticity as Santa himself. So this is one that's a very, uh, it, there's a procedural element to it, but it's very interesting how they apply the United States courts into the fantasy element of a holiday with Santa Claus, like Christmas. Well, this movie is my favorite uh, Christmas movie. I love it so much. It's it, your favorite Santa, too, right? Yeah, he's my favorite Santa, for sure. Edmund Gwynn is really Santa, you guys. <laughs> um, in fact, in the 1946 Macy's Day Parade, Edmund Gwynn actually played Santa in it. And in that scene in the movie with the Thanksgiving Day Parade... They're really using the Thanksgiving Day Parade in the movie. Oh, so wow. that really happened. That really happened. Like that was the legitimate 1946 Macy's Parade that they used to film the movie That's um, as their set. And um, Maureen O'Hara, her autobiography, said, um, and I quote, those sequences like the one with Edmund riding in the sleigh and waving to the cheering crowd were real-life moments in the 1946 Macy's Parade. It was a mad scramble to get all the shots we needed, and we got to do each scene only once. It was bitterly cold that day, and Edmund and I envied Natalie and John, who were watching the parade from a window. <laughs> 
yeah, I, I'm sure it was pretty cold, and to be able to watch it from a window is nice, because you yeah. get to see everything. But he's yeah. not claiming to be Santa. He really is Santa. I mean, who else would be able to correct the window display guy that he, the reindeer in the wrong order? It's true. That's you a know. very good point. Yeah, only, only Santa can do that. Yeah. Edmund, uh, he really transforms into Kris Kringle in this film. I mean, if you look at him, if you look at photos of him uh, before and after of him in the outfit, you don't see it. You don't see Santa in this guy's picture in his face. But as soon as he's in this costume with makeup and stuff, he he embodies the spirit of Santa so oh well. Gosh. He makes you believe in Santa again. It's it's such an, a sweet, like heartfelt, wonderful movie. Yeah, this is a great one, I think, for uh, people that have families and they want to introduce their kids to the spirit of Santa Claus. I think this is a great one to do that with. Uh, I don't... Yeah. Mind you, it's a little slower paced than, than some of the newer films that you'll have out, but I think it's worth it. But it also know? really brings you into the holiday spirit, too, right. and yeah, it's just a, it's a great movie. It really is. It's a great movie for adults and kids alike, so it's one that we both highly recommend for anybody. And uh, this one is available to stream. If you are uh, streaming and you have a Disney Plus membership, you can find it on there. It does uh, have uh, Miracle on 34th Street on Disney Plus. So there's that. And I'm sure uh, a lot of these films are probably also on Amazon Prime. But Amazon Prime just charges for it, you know. So if you have an Amazon Prime account and, you know, it's not a Prime film, you would have to pay probably $2.99 to $3.99 to watch. But Disney Plus, it would be free if you have a subscription. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. We're going to be talking about uh, something that we all wish for when we're younger. And... Uh, let's be honest, uh, as adults too, usually, unless you have to go to work in it. We're talking about A White Christmas. Uh, this film came out in the 50s, right? 54. 1954, right, okay. It's a long one. It's about two hours and 20 minutes long. So good. It's a musical comedy, and uh, it stars Vera Ellen, Rosemary Clooney, Bing Crosby, and Danny Kaye. Now, you know with Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye, of course it's going to be a musical comedy. You know, it's just... <laughs> The way it breaks down. Yes. And I'll give you a quick synopsis of this. Singers Bob Wallace, of course Bing Crosby, and Phil Davis, Danny Kaye, join sister act Betty, played by Rosemary Clooney, and Judy, played by Vera Ellen, to perform a Christmas show in rural Vermont. There they run into General Waverly, played by Dean Yeager, uh, the boy's commander in World War II, who they learn is having financial difficulties. His quaint little country inn is failing, and he's in, you know, in dire straits. So what's the foursome do? Uh, they plan a yuletide miracle, a fun-filled musical extravaganza that they think will put Waverly back on the map and back in business. Um, it's it's a really fun film. I don't remember if we've watched it together. I think we have. It's um, possible. And if not, we've definitely seen it separately, because I've seen this film, you've seen this film. Yeah, this is another one of my favorites. It's I think I have a three-way tie, actually, with these two in the movie we're going to talk about after this one. But um, White Christmas, it's just such an amazing movie. Like, you laugh, you cry, you feel warm. Like, it just really brings that holiday spirit together, and it just shows goodwill, and when they help their their friend, their old general friend, like, it's just, it's a really, it's a really great thing that they do, and, and it's interesting because, um, the movie's called White Christmas, right? So, mm -hmm. of course, Bing Crosby sings the song White Christmas in the film. Right. Um, twice, and what's interesting is that this isn't the first time that Bing Crosby has sang White Christmas in a movie. This is the third Jeez. Yeah. So the first time that Bing Crosby sings White Christmas in a movie is the 1942 movie Holiday Inn, which is another great movie um, that I really love. Um, and the second time he sings White Christmas is in the 1946 film called Blue Skies. And then third, White Christmas, 1954. Oh, wow. So three different films he sang the same song. And mm -hmm. Everybody was okay with that. Yeah. It's a great song. I mean, it is a great song, and he sings it very well. Yes, um, it's just fascinating that he sang it three times. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Rosemary Clooney, she is George Clooney's aunt, if I recall. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. And Vera Ellen, you had mentioned something about her being a 
very, very good dancer. Oh, she is really good at dancing. She's really impressive. There's this one scene where Vera Ellen comes down from the ceiling, like the sky, mm -hmm. and she's lowered down onto the dance floor, and you just see a close-up of her foot tapping on it and you can see the vibration how fast she's tapping and it's like wow like you're really good to like tap yeah. that fast like yeah. it's she's impressive she is so good i just love her i mean i have restless leg syndrome but i don't think i could tap that fast no she's she's amazing yeah. she's really good well and, and not to not to overshadow rosemary who's who's phenomenal oh she's great at know. singing i believe she yeah. sings vera ellen's parts because Vera Ellen's brought on for dancing and Rosemary's brought on for singing. Oh, okay. And since Vera, Ellen, Vera Ellen's not much of a singer and mm -hmm. Rosemary Clooney's not much of a dancer, you can kind of tell that, like, they're, they help each other. They balance One that out. Helps and the other strength, yeah. Yeah. That, like, that makes sense. But it's, it's a phenomenal movie. It's really Probably good. the same thing with Bernie Crosby and, and Danny Kaye, too. Danny Kaye's a better dancer than Bing. Yeah, and Bing's the better singer. Yeah, right. absolutely. So yeah. They, they definitely balance each other out. Yeah. That makes complete sense, and it's a it's a really fantastic film. Um, it isn't you can find it, of course, it's in color, and uh, it is available uh, streaming platform wise. It's uh, on YouTube. You can find it for two ninety nine. Other platforms, I'm not sure. Like I said, you can probably again find it on Amazon Prime, but you may have to pay. And there may be some other platforms out there if you go searching that might have it as well. Uh, or odds are one of your relatives will have it on DVD or Blu Ray, and they can just loan it to you because. <laughs> Everybody has this classic pretty much. It's so good. At least one person in the family has this classic movie. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the next one now. We're going to talk about this one. I know most of you have seen, and if you haven't, I, I don't know what you've been doing. Like This is a, a film that came out in 1946. 46. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And it stars James Stewart, Donna Reed, and Lionel Barrymore. And Henry Travers. Right, Henry Travers, too. Uh, Henry Travers, a very important character in this. Yes, uh, And Clarence. this film is called It's a Wonderful Life. Now, Henry Travers plays Clarence the Angel. Uh, George Bailey, who's played by James Stewart, uh, he's had so many problems, he's thinking about just ending it all. He's thinking about, uh, I think, jumping off a bridge, right? Mm-hmm. And it's Christmas, and uh, you see these angels discuss uh, George Bailey, and you see his life in flashback, and then... As George is about to jump, he ends up uh, being, uh, he ends up actually rescuing his guardian angel, Clarence. Yeah. Um, Clarence jumps in in order to save Right. Clarence uh, is like, well, George. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you can see what I'm going to do, and then you can try to save me. So it proves to Clarence that uh, he's a good person at heart mm -hmm. and also stops him from doing something very foolish. So it's a very smart way to do that yeah. in a film like this. Um, so then Clarence takes him on a whirlwind tour of uh, what the town would have looked like if he hadn't been uh, born. around. Yeah, if he hadn't if been it born. hadn't been for all the good things he had done in his life to help everybody in the town. Yeah, and it's just a really inspirational movie. Like, to see, like, how much one person, how much difference one person can make. And, you know, and, and that's the same with everybody. Like, we all, each person individually is so important, and they make such a big difference to so many people. And... That's why it's such an inspiring movie to watch George Bailey realize that himself. Like, wow, if I hadn't been born, all these things wouldn't have happened. Like, it's a real, it's a feel good movie. It's a wonderful Christmas movie, and it's a wonderful life. Mm hmm. You know. And Frank Capra, not to overshadow him, is an amazing director. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's directed other classics as Mr. Deeds. You can't take it with you. Uh, Lost Horizon, Meet John Doe, uh, and uh, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington as well. Yes, he's and amazing. a couple of those films actually also star James Stewart, or Jimmy Stewart. Um, Jimmy Stewart's an interesting character. Basically, I uh, and throughout my young adult life and teenage years and stuff, I only knew him as uh, the Harvey guy and the It's a Wonderful Life guy, and that's it. Oh, wow. And then I got introduced to him, uh, with him to... Um, with, Philadelphia uh, Hitch story? Hitchcock classics. Oh, yeah, Hitchcock too, yeah. yeah. And uh, Rear Window is probably one of my favorite Jimmy Stewart performances to this day. Yeah. Of, you know, because I haven't seen all of his films. 
Uh, yeah. I, it's, he's so good he's in that. He's really good in everything he does. And he was phenomenal in Vertigo. Rope. Like, and Rope. Just like the, the way he plays these characters. You can tell why Hitchcock favored him, you know, and, and why he used him as much as he did. Because Jimmy yeah. Stewart is just phenomenal. He can play that broke down man. He can play uh, somebody on 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 the edge. He yeah. was Robert Downey Jr. before there was Robert Downey Jr. He has that jittery kind of a nervous energy, but then he can turn on that charm and that that smarminess so easily yeah. in any role he plays. Uh, and that's something that you it's hard to learn. It's something that you you either have or you don't. Yeah. And if you learn it, you have to work really hard at it, and he did. So yeah. Jimmy Stewart's amazing. Yeah. Very I'm talented. Very big fan of Jimmy Stewart. So those that haven't seen it, please 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 seek out this film. It's you won't a regret it. Classic. Uh, it is available to stream right now on Hulu. So if you have Hulu, you should be able to stream it. I don't know if you need a premium subscription for that or not, but I do know that it is available on Hulu. Uh, and we're going to go to one more, I think, one more classic. One more, yes. It's for. a very good one. Last but not least. This one, uh, in any other state, it just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> we're talking about Christmas in Connecticut. And this film came out in... I'm going to quiz you. What year? 1945. Ah, you know it. Okay. <laughs> She's got this down. And it stars Barbara Stanwyck, Dennis Morgan, S.Z. Sakal, and Sydney Green Street? Mm-hmm. Sydney Green Street. Green Street, yeah. And uh, the synopsis of this is, while recovering in a hospital, war hero Jefferson Jones, played by Dennis Morgan, grows familiar with the Diary of a Housewife column, written by Elizabeth Lane, who's played by Barbara Stanwyck. Jeff's nurse arranges with Elizabeth's publisher, uh, played by Alexander Yardley, which is, uh, or is Alexander Yardley, played by Sydney Greenstreet. Yeah, that's Sydney Greenstreet, yep. For Jeff to spend the holiday at Elizabeth's uh, Connecticut farm with her husband and child. But here's the thing. The column is a sham. Uh, so Yardley hastens to arrange a publicity ploy by setting up single, non-domestic Elizabeth on a country farm. She doesn't have any experience on a country farm. Yeah. Am I correct? Okay, yeah. So what's what's hilarious about this movie is that Elizabeth Lane is a magazine columnist, and she's very famous for putting out home-cooked family meals, and she talks about how she has a baby and a husband, and she lives on a Connecticut farm. Mm -hmm. Now, her boss doesn't know that that's all not true. Like, he really... He really believes that she, she actually lives on a farm and she has a husband and a baby. And so when he invites her himself over for Christmas dinner, mm -hmm. along with the the war hero um, for publicity, he's like, oh, this is a great opportunity. I can meet your baby. I can meet your husband. I can see where you live in the in Connecticut farm. And she's like, oh, man, I'm screwed because she lives in this like new york rip penthouse Gosh, and she just bought a mink stole and she's like and the only one and she gets her recipes from her uncle who owns a restaurant so oh like God. she doesn't know how to cook yeah. and then the, her boss <laughs> wants her to cook the dinner so it's like this whole she's got to find a farm and then there's a man who loves her but it's kind of unrequited she's not really into him but he's been wanting to marry her for a while mm -hmm. and she was like fine i'll marry you if we can use your Connecticut farmhouse for Christmas. Oh my God, she must have been really desperate. <laughs> yeah, to offer marriage. Even though she wasn't really into him, but then she ends up falling for the war hero who's engaged to this other woman. So it's just like a a, a tangled web. Oh, wow. And it's yeah. but it's so good, and it's like there's so much going on, and so many dilemmas, and like pickles that she gets in, and she's got to figure out how to get out of it. But it's a really funny movie, and it's a, a really good uh, Christmas classic. It's, a, it's another what I would call a, a dramedy. You know, there's some dramatic elements to it, but a lot of comedy, too. Yeah, definitely so it's a comedy. fun, lighthearted film with a few serious tones to it, um, but it's very good. It's in black and white. Yeah, um, there's a lot happening. It's funny. It's under two hours, which is rare for films around that time, apparently. But um, um, it, it's a quick one. It's yeah, a quick watch, and it's fun. Um, and and Barbara Stanwyck's character Elizabeth Lane um, was actually loosely, and I say this loosely, based on the then popular Family Circle magazine columnist Gladys Tabor, oh. who lived on Still Meadow Farm in Connecticut. So she had a Connecticut farmhouse. Okay. And I think, I, I highly doubt that Gladys Tabor, you know, 
was as false as Elizabeth Lane with her article. I'm sure, right. you know, Gladys Tabor's amazing. She was the real deal. But the fact that she lived on a farm in Connecticut, I think, is what kind of got their wheels ticking. Like, well, what if someone lived on a farm, pretended that they lived on a farmhouse, but they didn't really, you know? Yeah. So it, that's why I say loosely based off. Okay. But. That, um, it, it's, it's a fun, fun film. Um, I've, I've seen geez, bits and pieces of it throughout my life. I don't it's know good. that I ever sat down and watched it straight through, to be honest. Um, but when I was younger, I know my parents would play it, particularly my it's mom. Um, she, my mom's a, a fan of the classic films. My dad is a fan of sleeping through classic films. So there's a little bit of a difference there. Yeah. Um, this one is available. Uh, the only platform I know of right now that it's available on is YouTube again. Uh, from $2.99 you can purchase. Mm -hmm. uh, also, again, it might be available on Amazon Prime you want to check out. Or possibly free on some other streaming networks. It just doesn't list it for me. And then Christmas in Connecticut also. This is one of the first films to benefit from the post-war euphoria that gripped America in 1945. Despite being released in August, rather than a more logical holiday time release, this movie grossed a then impressive $3 million, making it one of the year's most successful movies. Yeah, it grossed uh, $3 million, and I think It's a Wonderful Life made a lot of money too. Uh, White Christmas as well. I mean, they're all, don't get me wrong, they're all hits, but uh, I think it was like one of these, I can't remember which one, was like, uh, for example, Miracle on on uh, 34th Street was almost three million. It was 2.7 million is what it made in the box office. Yeah. And back then, that's incredible. Yeah, that's know? a lot of money back then. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of money now, but now movies gross a lot more than that. So <laughs> right, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, and some of that, of course, I think has to do with uh, rentals and things uh, over time and stuff, and it accrues, uh, you know, and adds up. But that's still a phenomenal gross for a film from being as old as it is. And, and, and they're yeah. all being such classics. Yeah. So I guess what, what I want to leave people with, since we're going to be wrapping up here, is that uh, you don't necessarily always have to find the newest and the best when it comes to film. Uh, sometimes these classic films fill that hole that you, you need that cheer and that joy. And that's what they've been here for for 50 to 70 years now you know they've, they've yeah. been around and, and most of the stars in these films have passed on unfortunately um a few are probably still alive uh and uh you know happy to tell the tales of, of the stories uh in these films so uh katie i want to take a moment just to thank you very much for for being on you're and welcome for bringing these to my attention again and for going over the, the, these with me with the audience and stuff i'm sure they appreciate it as well so thank you you're welcome. Um, Definitely check out these six movies. They're they're six of my favorites. I I always watch them every year. Yeah, I think honestly, my mom. She listens to this. She's gonna be writing them down and be like, okay, I remember this one, but I don't remember that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then revisiting definitely. some of these classics. Yeah, definitely watch these movies. They're wonderful. Um, and as far as our podcast is concerned, we are available. Uh, on YouTube. We do a YouTube live podcast usually about every week, uh, although during this holiday season time uh, it'll probably be a little more sporadic as uh, some of us will be in and out visiting uh, our relatives and stuff and uh, just uh, staying in and, and taking care of ourselves. Uh, we are also available on YouTube for the actual podcast themselves, not just the live podcast. Uh, we are also available on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, tune in, and a whole host of others. So odds are, if you go to a podcast platform, we are on there. Uh, if we're not, if you want to reach out to us and let us know that you know you would like us on one of your favorite streaming platforms, please feel free to do so. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter as well under the name The Real Short Box. Uh, again, my name is Donald, and our special guest is Katie. Bye, guys. You have a great rest of your night. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. 